Welcome to Trinity to Go, a ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church in downtown Bismarck. I'm Pastor Mark Narum, and we are so thankful that you have found your way to worship with us. This is a ministry that is available to people 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter where you are, as long as you have an internet connection. So this is worship for the third week in Advent, this time of preparation and waiting not only for the Christ child, but for the Christ who will return as we confess. So we gather this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our prayer of the day today, I invite you to pray along with me. Stir up the wills of all who look to you, Lord God, and strengthen our faith in your coming, that transformed by grace we may walk in your way through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So our first reading this day comes from Isaiah, the 35th chapter, beginning with the first verse. So a quick bit of background. The prophet describes the return from Babylonian captivity as a joyous procession to Zion. God's coming reign will bring a renewal of creation in which health and wholeness will be restored. There is no need for fear, for God is coming to save. Isaiah 35, beginning with the first verse. The prophet writes, The wilderness and dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The majesty of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. The lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For waters shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the deserts. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grasslands shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and, and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Our gospel today comes from Matthew. <clears throat> the 11th chapter, beginning with the second verse. When John heard in prison that the, what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to them, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who does not take offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal places. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. 
I am a firm believer in the power of imagination. Unleashed, our imaginations can dream great dreams, ponder new possibilities, help us to live into the faithfulness that God is inviting us to, calling us to. Back in the day when I was in the process of building a congregational renewal workshop, I was doing some research and I ran across an article. And the title of the article was something like, Bob the Builder Got It Right. Well, who's Bob the Builder? Never seen the program myself, but for three to five-year-olds, at least 10 to 20 years ago, Bob the Builder was a big hit. It was a cartoon about a guy dressed in construction gear with a tool belt around his waist. And what often happened was something was broken. And the question always came to, the Bob, to Bob the Builder, can we fix it? And Bob's question, after taking a little bit of a look, I understand, was yes, we can. The article, which was kind of a report on some sociological studies that happened both in the U.S. and the U.K., said that Bob the Builder got it right, that asking questions like, can we fix it? Open up our minds, allowing us to see new possibilities, to think about new things, to engage new activities. Bottom line, questions are really, really important because they can help us lead to new discoveries. So here we are in Advent, in this in-between time, a time of already, not yet. And that's what we're celebrating. I, I think it's almost like standing in a doorway, right? When you stand right in a doorway, you're really not outside anymore. But you haven't entered into this next room, into this house. You're in this in-between spot. That's Advent. An in-between time. We, we have had the birth of Jesus, where God took on flesh, came into this world, encountered humanity at its fullest, as fully human. But... The kingdom has not fully come, right? In the birth of Jesus, sin, death, and darkness was defeated through his death and resurrection. But we know the kingdom is not fully here. We know because of the sin, death, and darkness that we continue to see around us. The injustice, the pain, the war, things that hit us or people around us. And so questions come. Questions come about who this God is and how this God might be acting. The people of Israel were waiting for a new day. That's what we're hearing in the first reading from Isaiah. This new day has come. This is a proclamation from God through Isaiah that a new day has arrived, a day where deserts will blossom, where the path will be made clear, where God will come and stand on behalf of God's people and lead people home. Remember the context. The first chapters up until this point of Isaiah are really words of condemnation that are spoken to the chosen people. Why? Because they haven't been following what God called them to. They haven't been taking care of all of the other chosen people. The elite, the powerful, those in control have turned their back on those in need. And not only that, Instead of following God, they've chosen to make political alliances to try to protect themselves. And in those opening chapters up until 35, God speaks a word of judgment. And that judgment came. It came by a foreign power, a, porn, a power by the name of Babylon that came in and defeated the Israelites, trampled the temple, grabbed the powerful and led them away, right? We've talked about this before. Well, there in captivity, the people had to begin asking questions. 
Questions like, is there forgiveness? Lord, will you come back to us? Will you restore us? Will we ever be able to go home? And God speaks. God speaks a word of promise through Isaiah here in this 35th chapter. God speaks of a day that will come. God speaks powerfully about a path being made in the desert, a path where there would be water welling up, where crocuses would be blooming. Can you imagine what is being shown there? The kind of path leading back to Israel will happen that even the foolish can't get lost on. Restoration, that's what's being put in the imaginations of these people who are still in captivity. Questions come into our minds as well. Maybe because we're captive to something, captive to grief, captive to loneliness, captive to friends or family who are dealing with addiction or mental health illnesses or all sorts of things, or if it's not us personally, someone somewhere around and about, and we wonder. And so we begin to ask questions. I think John the Baptist was wondering this day as well, sitting in prison, this one, this one who understood that he was the one who was to prepare the way for the Messiah who was to come. This one, who you'll remember from last week, proclaimed with fire and brimstone, looked at those who were coming and said, you brood of vipers, what are you doing coming out here? Fiery, flashy words came from John, words of judgment. And now he sits in prison, waiting his fate and wondering, was I right? Is this the one? Was I proclaiming for the right one? Did I miss it? Questions. And I love the way that Jesus speaks back to John. He says, tell him what you see and what you hear. Tell him. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. Words and themes that echo back to Isaiah of a new day that would dawn, of a new possibility. There's nothing wrong with asking questions. There is nothing wrong sitting alone in the darkness of your home, maybe with a tree lit and wondering, Lord, what's happening in this world? Lord, will you come? I need a word of hope. Lord, please come grab hold of me and walk with me. This third Sunday in Advent is always called God is often called Gaudete Sunday. A Sunday where we focus on joy. When I think of that word, it's not laughter and merriment. That's not what I think is being talked about. It is joy that comes in understanding that this one is with us. This one walks with us wherever we go, wherever we travel, wherever the journey leads us. This one, by the power of the Holy Spirit, is right beside us, holding us, leading us, guiding us. Until that day that the king is the kingdom is fully realized. Knowing that you are held in these hands this day and all days, that's joy. There's peace. Thanks be to God and Amen. So as we gather together this day in the midst of this time of worship, let's pray. 
Let's pray for all of God's people for whatever they need and for wherever they are. And so we pray this day. Holy God, we give you thanks for everything that comes from your hand. The gift of your Son the gift of your presence through the power of the Holy Spirit, the gift of warmth and food and so much more. Lord, in the midst of snow that has fallen and snow that is predicted, we pray that you would be with those workers who have to keep highways and streets and roads clear and safe. Be with law enforcement personnel who respond as well as those firefighters and ambulance personnel. Be with those who have to get to work to make sure that people are safe and cared for. Lord, we give you thanks this day for food and family and friends. At the same time, we look around at the injustice, Lord, and help us, stir us, move us to action in one way or another to care for your people. Lord, we lift all of these in your holy and precious name. But this day we also lift before you friends and family who are sick or hurting or in need of your healing hand, especially Don and Mike, Annette and Jan, Jim and Elizabeth, Melissa, Kathy, and Eric. Lord, all of these things on whatever else you see that we need, we lift in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me in the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, I am so glad that you have found your way to worship with us this day. If this is helpful to you, I invite you to let friends, family, others know about it. Let them know that there is a place that no matter where, there is always a gospel word for them of God's love and grace and mercy, God's invitation that they would come and drop a knee to this one, the King of Kings. This ministry is supported completely by your gifts and tithes. I'm going to put an address up, would invite you to consider dropping a check in the mail to help support this ministry. You know, we're able to do things like make sure that there's food outside because of the faithfulness of people. Um, We put out 12 bags of food every weekday so that folks who... um, might be living in difficult circumstances, have a place where they can pick up some nutritious food really easily. We support the work of places like Ministry on the Margin who keep a warming house open 24 or all night long so that um, those without another place to stay won't freeze to death. We take care of supporting places like Camp of the Cross and Missouri Slope all through your offerings. So I invite you to be a partner with us in these incredibly important ministries. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, check our website to find out when our worship times are on uh, coming up. Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, we'll be worshiping Christmas Eve at 3, 5, and 10 o'clock. Christmas Day is a Sunday, and it'll be normal worship times, 8.30 and 10.30. Holy Communion will be served at all five of those worship services. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, great to be with you. Now, may you receive God's blessing. Now, may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and always. I'm Pastor Mark Narum here at Trinity Lutheran in downtown Bismarck. So great to worship with you this day. Until we see you again, God bless.